This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe Rabel. Welcome back. So on this channel, I like to talk about multiple time frames. I like to talk about using MACD and ADX in multiple time frames. And what I want to do today is show when I would go and use an extra time frame, meaning I, typically you can use just two time frames side by side. But there are times where you have a pretty big advantage if you go down one more time frame. I want to show you how to do that and give you some details. Um, so if you have an interest in learning more about some of these techniques, I would suggest uh, starting with my book. Uh, it's at rabelstockresearch.com forward slash book uh, if you want to get some more information. Also, if you do enjoy the content, hit that like button and also subscribe. I'm going to use this chart of XLI for this example, and um, I'm going to look at this move to the upside back at the end of last year, and then we got a nice pullback to start the new year. Now, the first criteria in, a, in this type of a trade is we're looking for strength to the upside confirmed by um, ADX and by MACD. And in this case, uh, we only got green DI to confirm. Okay, we had a pretty big breakout and um, we got the ADX up about 25, but this gray line going across is, I think, really useful in telling us how strong the trend is um, to the upside. So uh, we had a little bit of selling here and then during this recovery and move to a new high, we did get green DI to break out again. So to me, that's good enough to consider uh, uh, a lot of uh, enough strength to want to play the next pullback. All right, so we always want to use these indicators to help us with the last leg. So here's the last leg before we get a pullback. So we want to use that to determine whether we think there's more upside coming. All right, so now once we have that pullback developing, that's taking place here right as we start the year on the daily chart. Now, if you notice the way it played out, we had a pullback and then we came and we kind of failed at the 18. Um, but formed a little pivot there and then formed another pivot to the downside. So we created a uh, what I call an ABC correction, right? A move, a move down, a rally up, and then another uh, low. So a, 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 B, C, right? And when we do that and we make it a lower low, we can draw in a trend line. All right. Now, if you notice the way this has played out, we've come back to the 40-day moving average, we also had an extreme overbought reading in MACD here uh, to end the year. And notice how we've worked off that dramatically. We've, we, we were, I mean, this is an overbought. So MACD is considered a momentum indicator, but a lot of people don't realize it's also an overbought, oversold oscillator. And we were extremely overbought. And then we worked our way closer to the neutral level. All right. Now, a way I like to confirm that is I want to see the ADX, which was incredibly strong and reached 50 on this move to the upside. I want to see this work its way back down, at least back to the 25 line. And in this case, it actually dropped down below both of the DI lines and back below 25. So we had sort of confirmation at this point that MACD had probably worked off enough because the ADX had come down. And we can see during this process the strength of the buyers is just the, the red line. It did cross back above green, but it had very little strength um, taking place because we can see that the ADX really isn't moving at all. So this, this little pop here is actually an area where you want to start looking for a potential opportunity. All right. So we get a little pop like that, but it doesn't cause any real strength. There's no volume associated with it. So we want to go down and, and look at this and say, OK, I've got an ABC correction. All right. I'm back to the 40. I've created a trend line because I have a lower high and a lower low. And I know that I've worked my way back down to this area, but there's no real sign of strong selling. All right. Now, when I have that, OK, I've got a pattern on the higher time frame that looks really attractive, pulling back to support. On the lower time frame, I've created a uh, belief, at least in my mind, as I go through and look at this pattern that we're coming into some form of support and we don't have a lot of selling during the process of the decline. If I have that, I have those two things in place, then I can go down 
one more time frame. And what I do in this case, and, and I, almost every single time when I'm doing this, I am I'm typically looking for a one, two, three reversal to take place to get me in um, usually earlier than I would if I were using uh, just this one time frame. But more important than anything, a lot of times it can help reduce the risk in a uh, trade. All right. Um, now, the third reason why I like to do that is because it also is going to help us determine when this is really getting ready to go again. All right. And match up with what's taking place here. We're going to get everything going back to the upside. So we can do that by looking at the smaller time frame and looking for a reversal of the trend. So while this was setting up and creating this downtrend line, um, we had this correction back. Um, you know, again, this is right at the beginning of the year. You can see this is right at the beginning of the year. We had this move to the downside and we can draw in another trend line because we made a lower high and a lower low. Now we've got this downtrend line in place and we had some pretty good selling. We had pretty good overrun. So this isn't the type of thing where I would get overly aggressive. Now, if this didn't show a lot of selling strength uh, in either of these indicators in either MACD or ADX, this did it by breaking, clearly breaking the zero line. And this did it by breaking above the 25 line based on the sellers. This red caused the ADX to jump to the upside. If you want to learn more about either of these in more depth, I have done several videos on these. OK, and you I've got a playlist on the channel and you can go back and I've done them for years. Uh, you could start from the beginning and kind of work your way through. Um, so anyway, just a thought. Now, if we have this reversal taking place, we break the trend line and then we come back and test. And if you notice, we're actually testing the 18 at the same time. And then we turn back up and complete the one, two, three pattern. All of this is in my book as well as my courses. Um, this pattern, I spent a lot of time on discussing all the nuances of it. But we get this one, two, three reversal to take place. Now, one of the things I talk about in the course is that if if you have strength in ADX here on this decline, we need more proof than just price reversing. I don't necessarily want to just get in on a one, two, three if I don't have enough strength in green DI. And in this case, what I would do is be waiting for the next higher low where green DI is confirming. Do you see how green DI actually crosses above? Now, remember, this is the strength of the buyers. We want the buyers to take over again. And they pull back and they hold above 25. They hold above the red. That's the proof that I'm looking for. And we could have played that, um, you know, as a higher pivot, low entry, turning back up, um, coming up through here. Now, if you think about it, where that's taking place, that's actually taking place right at the same time that we are breaking the trend line. The same day that we're doing uh, what I'm describing here is actually taking place at the trend line break. So you could have taken, taken the trend line break. I mean, there's no question that this is a zero line reversal with low ADX. You have an ABC correction. Uh, you're pulling back to trend support here or what I would consider to be price support uh, on this time frame. But what this does for me is that there's a couple things I can do. So I could trade this using risk off the hourly to start instead of daily. Um, now, you got to decide what kind of trader you want to be. If you want to be a shorter term trader, then yeah, you want to use the risk on this time frame and try and get in and then try and exploit what's taking place on the daily and the weekly uh, and try and make a little bit of money that way. All right. Now, if you're the way I would typically do it is use this time frame to really help me with the timing and give me the confidence that this trend line break is the correct time to get in. And then I would probably actually use daily risk in this situation, say it's a weekly and then a daily, a weekly setup, a daily trigger, and I'm using this to help, all right? It doesn't mean you have to take the risk or manage the risk off of this time frame. This is just helping you enter. And then from that point on, you don't even have to look at this time frame. You use the uh, daily chart into the uh, weekly chart, and you can even use the monthly to help with the timing or the help, what kind of a target to expect or uh, whether it looks like it's going to be a big move or not. So uh, these are the kinds of techniques that I like to use when I'm when I'm looking at multiple time frames. This this, is, this hourly chart can be incredibly helpful if you're getting in on a daily into the weekly. 
uh, to help you have the confidence to say, okay, we're getting ready. Green, the buyers are coming back into this. The trend is reversing on this time frame. I think there's a pretty good chance this is getting ready to go. If you don't, if you get a trend line break on this time frame, but it's really not showing up as a clear reversal, an improvement in momentum across the board, then you, you probably would want to question and maybe look for the next pullback or something like that. So it can be incredibly helpful when it comes to the timing and making a determination of whether you want to take that trigger on the daily or not. So hopefully this helps. Um, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks.